Okay, so I am Dr. Prashant R. Reddy. I am an ENT surgeon who also deals with specifically in the nose and also with the snoring. So I specialize in taking care of patients who are having snoring and I cure them of their snoring. So DNS is nothing but deviated nasal septum. The septum is nothing but the nasal septum is a central bone which is there here. From if you see that that is the bone which splits your nose into two nostrils, the right and left. So that septum in 90% of patients or 90% of the population is not straight. It's usually bent. It's either bent to the right or to the left or it can be bent both sides. Depending on how the patient or the race of the patient also is a matter. Basically in Caucasians or the whites, it's more grossly bent. And in uh, the African patient, uh, African people, it's more straight. We are, Indians are a mix of both. So ours is more deviated 90% of the time. So you'll ask, uh, the, you'll ask me what are the causes for the deviated nasal septum. So the causes for the deviated nasal septum is because of either your, uh, how you were born or when you are learning how to crawl, you would have bumped your nose. So it's because of a trauma at a very young age, which I wouldn't specifically put it as a major trauma because these are traumas which are unnoticed because it's a part of learning how to crawl, learning how you are born. So secondary to those micro traumas, there'll be micro fractures inside the septum. Secondary to that, the septum will get bent and it will not heal straight. Secondary to that bent aspect, as the, as the person grows, that will lead to further deviation and it will lead to further bending. And that leads to the obstruction of the airflow. So many people might notice when they're doing pranayama or any other symptoms, they will have breathing difficulty in one side of the nose. This is the primary uh, reason for of DNS. Many a time, 99% of the time, this common cause, this is one of the commonest cause for your headaches, migraine headaches, which many doctors misdiagnose. It, this DNS causes a compression on the nerve. There are two types of nerves. One is anterior ethmoidal nerve and the back, there is a spinopalatine ganglia. Because of the compression of that, it leads to various types of complex headaches. Headaches can come as severe as migraines where the patient is constantly vomiting and having other issues or the patient just can't function. They'll have to go sleep for four to five hours and then only their headache goes. So that severe it can be. It can also present with neck pains. It can present with ear pains. It can present with shoulder pains. So these are the presentation which is quite uh, uh, a lot of people, a lot of uh, doctors ignore or, or are not, uh, how do I rephrase it, are ignorant about. So di diagnosis of DNS is basically done in two ways. One is a clinical examination, one is a radiological examination. With a clinical examination, I can flick your nose and see, put a torch inside and I can see if there's an obvious bend. Sometimes the obvious bend is not very, very clearly seen. So we'll have to do an endoscopy of the nose and check the nose on the inside of the nose. And uh, radiologically, that has to be confirmed because the bend can be very, very small. There can be a sharp bend called a spur. And that spur can cause various types of headaches based on the compression of the nerve. So it is radiologically, we'll do a CT scan to understand how the bend is and then take it accordingly. So once the patient is diagnosed with uh, the septal deviation or uh, what I call it as Stutter's neuralgia, we, uh, I do an endoscopic surgery where I'll pass the endoscope through the nose, operate the nose, remove whatever is in excess and, cause, and also do the decompression of the nerves where it's touching and that will lead to immediate relief of the patient's symptoms of headaches, back, neck pain, shoulder pain and muscle cramps that will immediately go immediately after surgery so immediately after the surgery so you will be having splints inside the nose because i would have corrected the the septum so splints are basically like pillars which are put inside the nose it's this long two inches long which go on either sides of the nostrils 
and uh, that will keep the septum straight and it will help in the healing process. So that splints will be removed uh, in the OPD after seven days. After that, the breathing will be, as my patients say, they are breathing 100 times better after the surgery. And uh, their headaches are completely gone immediately after surgery. Their neck pains are completely gone immediately after surgery. So some patients might complain of pain in the teeth because of the splint. Once the moment I remove the splint, that pain also is gone. So if patients who have got this neck pain and they would have gone to the, the orthopedician and they'll tell it's normal because there's no compression of the nerves and they would have gone to the neuro, neurosurgeon and then they, again they would have told there's no compression. What, what is the root cause for that would be the nose. And so the examination of the nose and, and understanding how the nose is on the inside is very, very crucial. Once we understand that and we can address that root cause and immediately after surgery your neck pains will go. So if you have any queries related to uh, DNS and if you can relate to all the symptoms which I just mentioned like the headaches, neck pains and shoulder pains and other things which you are uh, which you're suffering from and which has not been diagnosed by uh, properly, you can definitely reach out to us and by dropping a comment in the section below and we will get back to you.